No. <gasps> Disgusting, check. Vile, check. Made my soul sad, check. <sighs> Hello, creeps. Andy here, and today I want to read the slob with you. This is by Aaron Beauregard, and this is an extreme horror novel. I have read one other book from him before. I read Playground, which was pretty mild. Okay. The amount of times I drop books is absurd. A lot of you guys recommended this one and said that it was gross and tough to read. And so you interested me. And so I thought today we would do a little bit of a reading vlog, read it together and yeah, talk about it. I'm gonna read the back really quick and let you know what it's about, just so you have some idea going in. Okay, so it's about a girl named, or a woman named Vera. She grew up in a really dirty household, which turned her into a clean freak. And she ends up becoming a door-to-door -door salesman when she figures out she's pregnant. And then she arrives at a house that's disgusting and kind of reminds her of her childhood. So here we go, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna start it right now, but I do have some friends coming over later, so I will probably, I'm assuming, finish this tonight slash tomorrow. We'll play it by ear and see how it goes. Okay, so the first chapter is called The Remnants of Violence, and I don't know if you could see this picture. Aaron Beauregard books, at least the f only one that I've read, has pictures in them, so that'll be a fun little uh, addition to the story. Okay, let's get to reading. Okay, pretty sad so far uh wow you can really feel the emotion in this first chapter that was very that was a really effective first chapter and a really cool start to a story the only other book that i've read from him like i said was playground and i did find that one a bit wordy where there were just sentences that i feel like could have been condensed a little bit and maybe because of the use of so many words in the sentence the meaning was just not as strong as it potentially could have been but this one i don't feel that way the first chapter i i'm really into so i'm really interested to see how the rest goes so I'm on page 30. So far, not too bad. Pretty interesting. So far, I like the characters. I think what I like about his work is there's obviously more to the story than just the blood and guts, and you get to know the characters a little bit more. And so far, I'm really enjoying this. Like I said, I'm on page 30, but my friends will be here shortly. So I'm gonna go play some games and hang out with my friends. And then we will be back tonight and we'll read more of the book and we'll probably wrap things up tomorrow because they'll probably leave kind of late. But anyways, so far not so bad. Let's see how it continues on from there. I'll see you later. I'm officially back. It's freezing outside right now. Anyways, um, it is currently 3.15 in the morning and we just finished, my friends just left a little while ago. We ended up playing this um, zombie board game. It's really fun. However, our colony did get overrun by zombies and we all did die. <laughs> but other than that, it was a blast. But let's get back to the slob. Okay, I had every intention of filming more last night, but I went to go get into pajamas because it was really late. Oh, and take out my contacts, my eyes were bugging me. My brain just went into automatic mode and I just got ready for bed, washed my face, brushed my teeth, got into bed and I was like, I was in the middle of filming, what happened? But anyways, so I took it as a sign to go to bed. So I did. I only read a few other additional pages and I have one quote that I wanted to read for you. Um, I mean, just, well, first, I guess I should start by saying that if you haven't figured it out by now, this is an extreme horror novel. So we're going to be go going over some quotes and talking about some gross stuff that's in here. So if you're sensitive to probably anything, you might want to skip the rest of this video. This said, the half-hearted blow sent me flying on my ass into the human gumbo below. <laughs> So that was the only quote that I wanted to read you. Otherwise, we're gonna get back into the story and read, finish up. Um, it's kind of just starting to ramp up right now. And that I feel like is how Playground was too. It was pretty mild. And then things got progressively grosser as the story continued. So let's begin and see where the story takes us. But so far, super mild. I It hasn't really even been, I mean, that human gumbo thing was kind of the only, well, I guess there were a few other things before that, but nothing too, too terrible. So let's get reading. When I'm reading these extreme horror books, 
I always think, okay, I know where this is going. It's gonna go in this manner. He abducts a girl, I know what's gonna happen. And then I'm just like, I just, how does somebody think of this stuff? It's just not what is typically written about, you know? It's wild, it's absolutely wild. <laughs> This is where it starts getting bad. I just, I just know it. This is very violent. It's very violent. Oh, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. I have no words. What are you going to do with that, sir? My imagination can't even fathom what is going to happen next. <gasps> no. No, 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 this is so wrong. This is so wrong. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. How is there still like 50 pages left? What else, what else could possibly... Actually, I shouldn't even say that. I'm gonna jinx myself. This is way worse than Playground. This is just sad. Shut up. I need a break. <sighs> okay. Then, like a dog with a new treat, he gnawed on the rubbery skin for a while before slurping it down with all my hair like you would spaghetti. I have no words for how much that makes me want to vomit. My sentiments exactly. It's truly impressive how someone's imagination can think of how messed up this stuff is. This has entered my top category of the most disturbing extreme horror books that I've read. This is just like, uh, yeah, like baby in a blender level fuckery. It can't get worse. It can't get worse. Oh no, this sentence says, it reminded me that things could always get worse. Oh, <laughs> what? You know why I think I enjoy these books? They are so unpredictable. I mean, maybe some of them you can say are predictable in some senses for some people, but not for me. And uh, it's just more surprising every single, so like I said, you think you know what's gonna happen and, and you don't, you have no idea. Or maybe some people do, but I, me personally, I don't. And I think that's why I like them. In that sense, it's kind of satisfying in a way. Um, because yeah, I, it, it really does surprise me. Like these books actually do surprise me and this scene surprised me. I was not expecting that. Yep, yep, that's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem. You cannot live without a head. That is a fact. Cooking corpses in a vat of burning water. Sick. This video will probably be demonetized, but I must read you the sentence. He stuck his greasy mitt into the hot cannibal stew and brought the handful of feminine brisket to his lips. Oh, just just so much vivid imagery in my head reading this. I gotta tell you, very effective writing. And if the plan was to gross me out and to make me never be able to experience a moment of joy again without thinking about this book, Aaron Beauregard, you succeeded. I feel ill. Physically, mentally, spiritually, literally. Theoretically, that was rough. Okay, um, I took some notes though, so we can talk and have a little bit more of a deep analysis of this one. And let me know in the comments if you would rather the reading vlogs where I read five in one week, or if you prefer videos like this where we go into a little bit of a deeper analysis of, of the extreme horror books. Okay, so let's talk about this law. Obviously violent, disgusting. Hold on, I have a few funny lines to read you. I really like this one. This was like Groundhog's Day with John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> That might be one of the best lines in the book. I really enjoyed that. And then this one was, I had created my own den of deformity, a land of misery without smiles. Uh, that probably makes a little bit more sense if you know what happened in that scene, but a great line nonetheless. Okay, so let's talk about this. Sometimes I get comments that extreme horror books are just gross to be gross and they have no meaning and blah, 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 blah. And sometimes that's true. And sometimes there are obviously are parts in them that are just gross to be gross. But I do think that this one has more beneath the surface, at least for me personally. I'm not saying that this was the intention of the writer. I'm not saying everybody will feel the same way, but I did see more in here to analyze than I did in say the book Playground. I think that one is just kind of like a fun, silly book. And it was fun, it was fun to read. But this one I felt 
like there was a little bit more behind the character and the story. So without giving too much away, the, be the beginning really mirrors the end of the story. Well, also, I guess the end too, but also just being abducted, you know, this character not having control in her life and having no way out and having to try to depend on herself to get herself out of there when she doesn't have anyone else to depend on. I thought that that was an interesting parallel and obviously super interesting character arc for the story. She honestly has to make a few character arcs which was kind of interesting to see and watch her grow in that way. There's also a parallel between, um, I can't read my own writing. Oh, there's also some discussion of the parallels between her life and her husband's life. And so I don't know, this could be a comment on fate or everything happens for a reason or coincidence or chance or that you just can't change what is going to happen to you kind of thing. But I did think it was interesting that there was just a lot of thought put into what happens and everything kind of comes back around and wraps up and I really enjoy those stories. I think that there were themes definitely in here about gaining power because you feel powerless and in that sense I feel like the slob and our main character Vera are similar and in some instances that play out as well which I won't give too much away but there are some parallels between those characters. I also thought that there was a cyclical nature of the story where well I guess I won't, I won't give too much away but it was maybe to indicate that we can't run away from who we really are or where we come from or what is going to inevitably happen to us anyways. So I did think that there was more in here than just blood and guts certainly. I also am a big fan of the illustration. The only thing that I, I will say is I think that I understand why it ended where it did and it's not that I didn't like the last two, two uh, chapters in here but I truly think that if it would have ended without those two additional chapters it would have made a stronger story because of the way that there are cycles in the story and what ends up happening and where it starts and I think that would have been just for me personally uh, maybe a little bit more satisfying maybe because the Although the addition in the next chapter was interesting and I did like the way it played out, I don't think it necessarily added to the story the way every other chapter did. It was the only thing that left me a little unsatisfied. But I would say that I really enjoyed it. It was really, really, really gross and hard to get through and stuff. I'm not recommending this book for everybody, but I did think that there was a lot more in here than I thought there was going to be. This book really surprised me. It really did. So disgusting? Check. Vile? Check. Made my soul sad? Check. But was it a good book and did it do what it was supposed to do? Yeah, it did. So thank you Erin Beauregard for the nightmares. And that is kind of my analysis of The Slob. Thank you guys for recommending that one because I, yeah, that was um, a lot more than I bargained for. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your comments about The Slob down below and how you guys want to proceed with the extreme horror if you would prefer a deep analysis or kind of more shallow just reacting to them let me know and thank you for watching did i already say that and i will see you soon with another horror video bye guys i got nightmares in my head i fear that the thoughts build up until i can't hear that my mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper